Hi, my name's uh, Pastor William Jumas, and uh, my country where I come from is from Birupai country, which is from uh, Tauri and Port Macquarie area. I'm a minister of uh, ACC Church. I'm married also with a beautiful wife, Sandra, and I have six children and nine grandchildren. Well, I was 19 years old in Long Bay Jail and I met a Christian in there. I couldn't run away from him because I was locked up with him. He started to preach to me and when he said, Jesus, come and said, well, that sort of, I went away with that thought and it just kept on repeating in my mind. And I believe now it was the Holy Spirit that was really speaking to me, even though it sounded foolish. When I was a young boy, about 10, 11 years old, I used to run away from home. We had a background of violence and alcohol. It was a big issue in our family. So I used to take off as a kid, trying to find some sort of safety. And so I'd go and stay with this old lady and she would take me to church. But later on, when I become 19 and when I was in jail, then came back out, I went back to the Christian hostel who was sitting there, that old lady. And she leaned across the table and she said, son, would you like to give your heart to Jesus? Well, I went, um, oh yeah. So I opened my heart to Jesus. And you know, in that very moment when Christ became my Lord, my Saviour, drugs, alcohol, everything just began to, just totally be cut off my life. I was so caught up in sin, so caught up in my own little bubble of world, I had no meaning or purpose. But when I got saved, God just began to give me purpose and understanding about the whole creation, and about his whole beautiful work and how he puts things into place. So I just told people about Jesus. All my friends, I went to King's Cross, I went all around the city just preaching about Jesus because I didn't know the Bible until later on I began to read the Bible. Couldn't even understand the Bible because when I was in high school, I only went as far as eighth class. The Holy Spirit began to teach me. My grandmother seen the change in my life. She seen what how Jesus could do. And so that revealed to my grandma that God's real because no one could actually change my life. No culture, no land council, but Jesus Christ was the one that changed my life. And she gave her heart to the Lord. I'm now in ministry full time. It's all because of the power of Jesus, all because of what God had done for my life. I love about Jesus how, how he can touch people's lives within the soul or the heart of a person. The Holy Spirit can just reach down inside and just move all the darkest shades and then makes it so bright for Jesus to walk straight in. It's not just a religious thing, but it's ch changed by the power of Jesus. Beyond all our mistakes, you know, all our weaknesses, it's like Jesus loves us beyond all description. You know, you see a little five cents coin and you throw it in the middle of the ocean. That's the size of Jesus' love. And the little coin is our sin. That surrounding water is like his deep of his love. It just covers us, every deep areas of our life, no matter what we've gone through. His love just becomes so real and tangible to every person's life. Jesus' love is beautiful. How does God see me? I think God sees me maybe the best person he's ever created. I think with my identity with God, knowing who I am, what I am, only comes with me growing and understanding of my relationship with the Lord. And the Bible says if you don't love yourself, you don't love others. So there's a healthy respect that created my whole features, you just have to be who you are. Doesn't matter if you've got weaknesses, doesn't matter if you make mistakes. You know, it's like our mum 
you could say the worst thing about the kids, but the mum still loves them. And that's how God is. When we start having a healthy understanding of what God sees who we are, how God accepts me, that sets me free. Because Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world, I come to save it. Old things are passed away and all things become new. So it's really knowing what Jesus has done for us and what he's given to us. My real passion is to raise up our Indigenous people of Australia and have strong leaders within their own community. So I believe if we can train up strong leaders, that means strong churches. So we're looking at the long term and I believe that the Lord told me about this training school to see our Indigenous people to rise up and see churches be planted in their communities and have strong leaders. We're starting to see that happen. So we have a Gangala church which is the Bunjalung word. It means a place of learning and wisdom. The training school also, 160, 170 students in about eight years. So 60% of that is probably indigenous. It's a real uh, great privilege to see what the Lord can do to young people's lives and how God can transform their hearts. I went to this prophetic conference in Sydney one African guy come and knelt beside me and prayed for us and then suddenly I had this touch of God. I felt the Lord was saying to me, the land is wounded. And I felt God was beginning to show me the, the deepness within the land. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says that he groans. You know, there's this groaning within the Holy Spirit that he wants to heal the land and even the people of the land. I begin to ask the question to the Lord, am I broken? I started crying before the Lord. But in that time too, I had this graphic picture and the Spirit of God began to show me that every community I go is to pray for the elders of the community and release the spirit of woundedness that was over the communities. And God said, as this takes place, then I'm going to prosper. Now prosper could mean spiritually, emotionally, mentally, or materially. But I believe the Lord wanted to bring that healing to the wounded hearts. I think it's got to come between ourselves. We've got to have this healing service between ourselves to, to embrace the Holy Spirit to bring healing to our, our woundedness of our hearts. And once that takes place, I believe a revival is going to set this nation on fire of the Holy Spirit pouring out His Spirit upon this nation like, like nothing. Because a lot of our communities are still wounded today, still carrying the scars. When we've been wounded, we can identify it with our own natural mind. But there's some things that we don't know only the Holy Spirit can bring that deep with the deep in our life, of our soul. That's the work of God that He wants to do within our life, be free. Our life becomes liberated by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that God's going to really raise up the indigenous people of Australia. I sense a new wind of, uh, of the Spirit over the land that's going to bring such a healing to our people. And our people are going to be affected with this first of all, I think. God wants to really come in that way that's going to bring such a liberty and such a freedom that we're not going to be entangled with the past anymore. And that's not going to be a, a one night thing, but it's going to be a, a definite process. When I see non-Indigenous churches open their hearts for Indigenous people and see them on their platforms acknowledging the First Nation people in, the, in major conferences, respect and honour that's going to be um, shown to each other, you know. So that's my perspective of what God wants to do to the nation. Yeah.